Good morning, selamat datang, talofa lawa everyone and welcome to the virtual colloquium organized by Institute of Teacher Education International Languages Campus or better known as IPG KBA with the team Capacity Building Educational Leadership and Management. I work as a lecturer in IPG KBA and I'm excited to be hosting this session today. Okay. If you are new uh, to this webinar series, welcome, selamat datang, and I hope you will stay tuned till the end of the session because today we have a very special speaker coming all the way from Samoa. Before we get to know him, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, everyone who attends to this webinar series will be given an e-certificate. Therefore, do not forget to register yourself now. For international participants, your IC number is 111111. Second, we would love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have any questions for our speaker, please feel free to send it through the chat box. The speaker will be answering questions at the end of the session. If we don't get to your questions during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow up afterward. And last, we'd like to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social network. So now let's is Dr. Tofilau Fagwele Suwali, who is currently the Dean of the Faculty of Education at the National University of Samoa. His roles are to manage and lead the operation of the faculty to achieve its primary objectives, that is to produce quality teachers for early childhood education, primary and secondary schools in Samoa. At the same time, he's teaching three courses, teaching science for ECE, primary teachers, teaching science for secondary teachers, undergraduate, and issues in science education for postgraduate. And Dr. Tifalao Lakfagwele Swali completed his PhD in 2013 from Messi University in New Zealand. Uh, how are you, Dr. Fagwele? From Samoa. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I, thank you, thank you, you, Dr. Prima. Okay, all right. Uh, I can see that there are so many participant, participants today. From Malaysia, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, I will hand over to you, Dr. Fagwele, to start off your session. Thank you. Okay, Talo Falaba, Salma Pagi, Salma Tatang, and greeting to everyone who is listening and also uh, watching this presentation. The topic of my presentation today is teachers' professional development through principles and instructional supervision. Please bear with me, some technology. Anyways, here's the outline of my presentation. I'll be looking at uh, two philosophical ideas, moving on to the three domains which underline this presentation. Then I'll be looking at some of the things that uh, developed from this uh, topic and also this presentation that I would like to share with the whole world. And then we come to a conclusion of this presentation. Contextualizing the topic of this presentation identifies two philosophical ideas that I need to clarify. The first one is professional development of teachers, or I will refer to as PD. The second philosophical idea from this topic is principles instructional supervision, which I refer to as PIS in this presentation. These ideas will formulate the design of the presentation. Now, first of all, professional development of teachers. Why do teachers need to have PD? Isn't it sufficient training and studies that they undergone through university, teachers college training, and uh, you know, um, senior institutions and all that? Isn't it enough there for them to, in order to, to be equipped 
to become teachers in the reality of the classroom teaching or even in the schools. There is a lot of uh, research already looked at a number of reasons as to why PD of teachers should be an ongoing program, as an ongoing strategy to help teachers and those who are on the field, in the, especially in the classrooms. In Samoa also, we, we follow and we embrace some of these uh, literature which refers to how and why teachers need to have PD. Now, PD in our community, we look at ongoing training and education of individual teachers in regards to their teaching and learning careers. By doing this, we believe that not only the teachers coming out with limited knowledge of the reality of the classrooms, but they are able to, to, to be helped to assist with the skills and the appropriate teaching strategies for the particular students who are at the school at the time. So it's very, very important to have this ongoing training. Having this PD also would be of help in terms of updating teachers, the new ones, as well as the ones who have been on the field with current educational trends. You know, there's so many educational patterns. There's so many things that happen around the world. If you look at the education for all, there's so many things that's happened. And somehow, the globalization of education, we tend to follow the education for all. Now we're looking at quality education and therefore the teachers need to be updated with all the trends and all the requirements in order to achieve those education for all, the goals of the education for all. At the same time, the teachers need to be updated with changes and the challenges that Education brings every year, there's always some changes. Every year, there's always some challenges. And teachers need to be equipped. Teachers need to be informed of the various changes and challenges, which you know will affect their teaching, their classroom teaching. At the same time, also, having PD or having professional development teachers will be able to assist in the development of new skills. You now, there's always a, there's a consistent change of new things that happen, new development of strategies, new ways of teaching, new tools of teaching in the classroom. And therefore, teachers need to be updated with all this. And therefore, we need to have this PD because this will be a mode, this will be a delivery to, to the teachers uh, in terms of having these new, new skills, in terms of having ideas of how to advance in, in terms of educational needs. One point that we need to, to, to take note at this particular case, before we go to the principles, to the second one, is that we need to know that when teacher graduates, when they were in the school, when they were training as, to become teachers, they get a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, they undergo a lot of research. They do a lot of uh, activities, uh, tasks oriented, which are supposed to be relevant to the classroom teaching. However, bear in mind that while they are undergoing those studies, they are actually in a different environment. They are not in the actual classroom, the reality of the classroom where they face the students. So whatever training that they were given or they faced while they undergo training or while they're doing studies uh, to become teachers, I believe that those training, those studies were somehow different compared to when they become teachers, somehow very, very different. Also, we need to know that coming from being a student to become a teacher, standing in front of a classroom is a different, it's, it's a very different job, it's a very different career from being a student to being a teacher. Having these PDs, having these professional development teachers will be able to help that particular teacher to transition. Transition from being a student to, to become a teacher. And that will be able to make that particular teacher feel confident, feel comfortable uh, in this particular job. 
Now, he or she is supported from being a student to this new field, which is the teacher. The other thing also to note before we move on to the second uh, philosophical idea, PD is very, very important because every year we have different students. You know, there's a different cohort of students that come this year. They, they have different needs. They come with different, uh, different abilities and they come from different uh, backgrounds, you know, socioeconomic backgrounds where their learning will also be affected. You know, and the learning styles will also be affected. The teaching strategies will also be affected. Now, having this information um, transmitted or be shared with the student, with the teachers in terms of PD or professional development, the teachers will be able to be equipped with all this information so that they are able to, to, to prepare themselves year after year after year that, yeah, of course, we have different students coming in and therefore we have to be flexible and therefore we have to be mindful of the different abilities of the students walking into the classroom. So having a PT, uh, you know, in the schools, uh, it's very, very important. The second philosophical idea is principal instructional supervision or PIS. Now again, the question is, what are the purpose of PIS? Why do we need to have a PIS? Now, again, there's a lot of research, there's a lot of studies looking at how the principal give the information, you communicate with the staff, having this relationship within the school. However, we believe that having this information delivered to the students, uh, to the teachers, or PIS, is to guide the students, not only the teachers, but the students as well. The principal needs to have this, uh, the special information to guide, you know, the operation of the schools, not only the students, but the teachers as well. They need to be given that information. And also here in Samoa, we have school committees, which uh, I think in some countries they use a, a board of school or something like that. So we have school committees where the, the, we have representatives from various villages who are involved in this particular school. So what happens is that having the PIS, having this information, the communication from the principal, PIS, these village representatives will be able to be informed of what's going on and what we need. And therefore having that, uh, the, that collaboration between the school and the community through the school committee. PIS is also important to, to supervise, you know, having this leadership role to monitor, looking at what's going on, looking at what we can do and what's been done, what hasn't been done. Mentoring, of course, you know, having this PIS will be, will be able to provide some sort of mentorship, be able to provide some support, helping teachers who are struggling, helping teachers who are new to the job. Therefore, having this PIS will be able to provide that help evaluate. Now, it may sound um, quite harsh to have this sort of evaluation by teachers, uh, by the principal of teachers, but it's very, very important to have this evaluation because this evaluation of the teachers as well as the school, how the, the, the school is uh, progressing throughout the year or throughout the term, it's important for the tomorrow. It's important for the next step. What can we do next? It's always based on what we get from the evaluation of what has happened. PIS also is, is to become aware of policies. You know, in my country, we have school policies, and I'm sure all other countries, they have school policies. Now, somehow these policies will, uh, you know, develop and then sit on a table, sit on the shelf, sit in the bookshelf. You know, they, they are hard to be, you know, very, you know, it's very rare for, for teachers to read those policies. However, those policies actually drive, actually uh, make sure that we do the right job. We are doing what we are supposed to be doing within the classroom. Unfortunately, without having the, the information sent from the principal, this PIS from the principal, the teachers will not be able to know that there's a policy developed, there's a new policy coming, and we are looking at revising such policy, so on and so forth. Now, the other thing that we, we, we consider in terms of having a PAS is having priorities. Now, some of the schools have different priorities. You know, they, here we, we, we 
embrace, because our Ministry of Education is not just education, we embrace sport and culture, we can mess Ministry of Education, sports and culture. So we embrace sports at the same time, you know, we embrace education and also we value our cultural aspects. And therefore we're making sure that what are we prioritizing in this particular time? What are we prioritizing in this term? Are we looking at um, school achievements and not results? And therefore, there are our practice, our classroom activities must reflect our priority. Educational trends and changes, as I mentioned earlier, having this information transmitted or shared by the principal through PIS, the school, the teachers will be able to be informed of all this and therefore looking at problems you know of course we have a lot of problems and um, sometimes it's very hard to look at problems by you know not do talking about it you know having a discussion about the problems and therefore we develop potential solutions or perhaps you look at alternative plans in order to overcome a problem or other problems having a PIS I believe that this will create good relationship within the school. Now, some of the, the some of the teachers need to to have this uh, communication with the with the principal. You know, and sometimes it's because we have this hierarchical system. You know, the big people, the the lower people, and therefore it's very hard to break that barrier. Unfortunately, having a good good relationship between the principal, who is of course it's higher in the hierarchy, and the staff that are here. Having that relationship, we'll be able to you know, work collaboratively and be able to do things well. Not only within the school, but we're looking at the school and community. As I mentioned earlier, that we have a very good collaboration with our community. We have a good support from the community. Unfortunately, if the PIS is not efficient and not well put in place, therefore that relationship with the community will not be carried forward, will not be effective as well. And of course, we have a lot of support in terms of funding from the community. So we need to have that relationship. And of course, PIS helps to improve, helps to improve the school facilities. We have a lot of, uh, you know, building schools and classrooms, school laboratories and things like that. But the school principal will, may not be able to know, the teachers may not be able to know what's needed, what's needed to be improved, what's needed to be done, or build new building or whatsoever. So therefore we need to have this instructional supervision, this sort of conversation, this sort of, uh, you know, a way of sharing information with the teachers. And the last one in terms of PIS, Having the PIS will be able to provide some sort of support. I mentioned earlier about the new teacher coming from the teacher's college, the teacher's training. He or she is finding the classroom very, very weird, very, very strange. He or she needs that support. He or she needs that support, that transition from where she or he was to where he, she is now. So the principal has to come in, having that uh, relationship with other staff and be able to talk it out, be able to converse, be able to communicate with that particular new teacher, that new teacher will develop. She will be doing the best out of her, you know, her career. And of course, having a support for the students. Don't forget the students, see? They are the very important customers in our, in our education system. Having the support for students, getting to know what's going on, the PIS will be able to provide. The sharing of information will be able to provide the support for the community and vice versa. And at the same time, we need to maintain positive attitude. Sometimes education can be very stressful. <laughs> we get burned out at times, I think. I'm sure most of you around the world are feeling the same feeling nowadays we're having no school no face-to-face -face teaching and you are uh, sitting in front of the laptop or computer trying to send information out to the students and activities out to the students and because we don't have um, a set time to come on the laptop we tend to spend more time on the laptop you know people come in and check 
every now and then you come and check, come and check. And then you feel so tired, it's, you feel so, you know, stressed out. But I feel that having this PIS will be able to, you know, talk it out. Will be able to create a positive attitude out of what we're doing so that we continue to do that we maintain, uh, you know, the best way of delivering our courses and our programs within the school. Now, with all these ideas about the two philosophical ideas uh, of uh, my topic, there are three important domains that I need to talk about, which actually came out of the two philosophical ideas. The first one is known as experience. The second one is knowledge. The third one is training. Now, these domains actually stem out from the two. The first one is PD, second one is IPS. Please note here that the PD is carried out by a person, is implemented by that person. The PIS also is implemented or performed or carried out by this particular person. In this presentation, the main character is the school principal. Now, these domains here, the three domains here, are very, very crucial for any school principal in order to implement effective PD and quality PIS. You're seeing the mathematical relations of a Venn diagram. I represent the three domains as that on the diagram. The first one we have, experience. The second one, training. And the third one, knowledge. Now, if you look at the Venn diagram, this shows that there is a relationship between the three, or amongst the three domains. In the Venn diagram, as in those of you who are uh, experts in mathematics, we have this, there is an X outside. Now, I will talk more about the X and the diagram, but let me look at the three, experience, knowledge, and training and the components of these three and how relevant they are to the implementation of PD and PIS. First one, experience. But we all know that experience is the process of doing over and over again. We believe that the more we do, the better it gets. No, we practice a lot and therefore we get to experience as we do. It's the process of seeing things. In science, we believe and we do a lot of experiments in terms of trial and error. We, we, we do get mistakes, we do get lots of errors, we continue doing and errors come up until we come up with, with a near uh, correct. And then we continue doing the experiment until we get average, you know, similar results. And therefore we say that, oh, now this is the answer. Because averaging up all that, it's, we get something. Now it's, it's the process of doing, it's process of observing. We observe, we get to know more. We do, we get to know more. Now, I always do this uh, with my students. Now, in the beginning, you get a number. Some more, we only have seven numbers for our telephone number. The first time you get a number, you look at the, where it was written. One, two, four, three. And then you dial according to the listed numbers. The fourth time you ring that particular person, or maybe the, the third time, some of the people are very good at memorizing, they are able to dial the number without remembering. So the more you do, you, you experience more and you learn more and therefore it stores 
in your brain, in your mind, somewhere in your memory. That experience is very, very important. The principles actually experience the same. You know, the more they, they, they sit there as a, as a principal, observing what's going on in the school, looking around, talking to the teachers, seeing what's happening, looking at the financial, uh, financial uh, statement, looking at you know, how much money they need every year, and looking at the school achievements, the students' achievements. No, they get to know, they get to learn more. No, they also gain some sort of experience by having an interactions, not only within the school with the teachers and students, but remember I mentioned earlier about the interactions and the relationship with the community. They get to know, the principal gets to know what's going on. The expectations and the needs of the community become aware of what's going on in the community. Just by experience, just by observing, just being part of that involvement, their interaction and involvement and participation in all those uh, different uh, um, settings, the principals are able to pick up something. The principals are able to learn something. And such learning will be get, such learning will be, will be stored in their memory for later use. And of course, such experience also, it's, it's very, very important because the principal needs to be aware of what's going on. Now, every year they get reports, you know, reports from the teachers, reports from the students, you know, the different classrooms about the students. So every five years of being a principal, you get to know the different um, reports and the different uh, development of students, even starting from you know, year 9, 10, 11, 12, year 13, the principal knows the development of this particular student starting from year 9, looking at the report and, and analyzing that report of this particular student, the principal is able to know the progress. The principal is able to, to have an awareness of the development of this particular student, whether the graph goes up and down, up and down, or whatever, or straight up. And then from there, he or she can draw conclusions about the development or make reports or references for these particular students. At the same time, the teachers, you know, with these kinds of experience, the teachers tend to have patience. No, this is one of the things that is very, very, very important for teachers is to have patience. You know, some of the students are very, you know, very, very hard to control. But if teachers have the passion, have the be able to to calm down, you know, having the patience of these particular students, the principal is able to you know, to control. The principal is able to share that kind of uh, patience with the teachers, and the teachers were able to pass on to other teachers. Also, the ability of having the mutual respect. Somehow, we embrace our cultural values very, very, you know, it's very, very crucial. You now, the experience of being a principal, you know, interacting with teachers, interacting with outside the school. The principal is able to, 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 to practice uh, and embrace our cultural values of respect, mutual respect. And at the same time, the principal will bring those values into the education system or into the particular school. The principal is able to practice. And then by the teachers looking, you know, the, the the teachers observing, you know, experiencing the same thing that the principal is practicing, they are also able to follow through, you know, embracing the cultural values. The second one is practical and uh, knowledge. Now, every principal has that knowledge, not only knowledge of their specialties, not only the knowledge of um, know the subject they teach or the subject that they have, you know, the course that they have um, attended when they were in schools, when they were in teacher training. 
but also they have the knowledge of the the responsibilities and roles of being a principal. The principal will need to be to be informed of the skills and knowledge required in this particular post. Therefore, before he or she becomes principal, he is aware that these are the requirements. Here, here are the skills and knowledge required to become a principal. And I will be asked during the interview, I'll be asked about these things. Am I prepared? Am I ready? So therefore, I have to have all the, the knowledge required and the knowledge, the essential knowledge for this particular job, the principal. While on, you know, on the, on the job, the principal goes through orientation programs. While on the job, they, they go through some sort of orientation uh, programs where the principal is introduced to the staff members, introduced to you know the, the students, uh, the community, and also the school community. And at the same time, he or she is observing what's going on, looking at the different files, looking at the different um, records of the school from, from the past years, looking at the plans for the next years. So during this orientation program, this getting to know program, the principal is able to gain knowledge. And those, the, that particular knowledge will be able to, you know, will be useful for his job. And again, observation is very, very important. The school principal will observe. You know, as a new principal, he'll look around just by looking and learning while looking. You know, looking at things, observing at what's going on, the practicality of, you know, how the operation of the schools is going, you know, the students' achievements, uh, the number of schools falling or number of schools increasing, and why, why not? And looking at the teachers coming in, going out, um, the development of teachers and so forth. These are the things that uh, the principal, you know, gains a lot of knowledge about just by looking, just by observing. Of course, there is an interaction between the principal, of, you know, the principals, the new principal coming in, there is a support uh, interaction, support, uh, they have a peer, they have a principal association where they get to meet, where they get to share information, where they get to, to support each other. You know, that, that sharing information, that collaboration amongst the principals, that peer collaboration is very, very important because the, the ones that have been on, uh, you know, the, the, the post as principals, they will be able to support the new ones. And they, they do that very well here in Samoa. They provide a lot of support for the new ones. They care for the new ones and they support and lift them up so that this new principal is able to, to gain as much as he or she can while starting, while building up the capacity as a school principal. The principal also gains knowledge just by you know, listening to the stories, you know, um, some teachers or some students, you know, they tell stories, but the principal needs to, to hear all that, the strengths and weaknesses. But the principal has, been, has, been, has she, she or he has to be a good listener to be able to learn from them. You know, just listen to the stories and then you hear the strength of this particular teacher or this particular student, or listen to the weakness of this student and this teacher. That is very, very important. And at the same time, you know, be able to gain the knowledge, the professional knowledge while on the job. As I mentioned earlier, the more you do or while you're doing this, you get to learn. So while the principal is now starting, this is week one, week two, week three, week four, he or she is able to pick up he is able to, she is able to, to learn as you progress. It's, it's a matter of learning while you're there. So you, you always pick up something new during your journey as a school principal. 
Third one is training. The third domain is training. So every principal should have some sort of training. They, of course, they've gone through training. Of course, they have, uh, you know, they, they were trained at teacher's college or a university or some sort of uh, tertiary institution. They had the training here. And also, it's, it's, it's important that not only doing that, they, they were at different schools and so when they were doing professional development, that those kinds of training could be informal or formal trainings. But the main purpose of training is to upskill. They had those training, but at this time, they had to upskill, continuously ongoing upskilling and expanding their capabilities. Not sitting comfortably as a principal right now, oh, I am a principal now, I achieve my goal, therefore here I am sitting here. No, you need to continuously ongoing doing your upskilling training. Now here in Samoa we have the Ministry of Education, Sports and Culture. They provide some sort of training. They provide short-term, long-term training or in-service training. We have the National, of University, National University of Samoa through the Faculty of Education. We have training. We have uh, programs for principals and also for teachers. Now, another good thing, another important thing about having training, you no know, things change. I mentioned about the changes that are ongoing and will definitely continue. Changes occur. Now, the principal back in, back in 2005 may not be able to be upskilled with the technology nowadays. She became, he became principal where there was very little, you know, information about uh, uh, various types of information system or technology or tools, online tools. Now we're using a lot of Moodle. Most of the principal don't know how to use Moodle. You no, know, these are the kinds of things. You now they need to, you know, to step up with their ball game. They need to be upgraded. They need to be upskilled according to what's going on right now in this particular era. So how can they do that? It's through training. Otherwise, they'll be left out. Otherwise, yeah, they will not be able to continue providing appropriate PD and effective PIS for teachers. And of course, they undergo training to, to, to make sure that they, they gain they, they develop, they sustain, they maintain professional attributes. They maintain the ethical standards. They, they make sure to have all that. You know, some of them have and they feel like, oh, it's enough, I don't need any more. I don't need any more training, I'm old, that's enough. No, we need to be updated, we need to be upskilled. You know, things have changed. This is the 21st century, things have changed. And also, to embrace our cultural values. Now, having this, then we come to the analysis of our domains. We come up with the experience, knowledge, and training. We look at this as experience, union, knowledge, union, training, meaning that the principal should have the experience, should have the knowledge, should have the training in order to implement all this. Unfortunately, some of the experience, some of the knowledge, some of the training may not be relevant. Therefore, if the principal is able to filter, if the principal is able to select the only components that are relevant, then we use the expression of E intersect T, K intersect T, which you look at the middle part where the intersection of training, knowledge, and experience that will be sufficient, that will be efficient, that will be quality PD and PIS for the teachers. It is important for all teachers to have experience, knowledge, and training. However, to implement effective PD and relevant PIS, the teacher, the principal must be selective. Now, Four themes that came out of this presentation, of this uh, study. The successful implementation of the two philosophical ideas is influenced by the three domains as I mentioned earlier. However, principal need to have a proper selections of appropriate components so that the three 
uh, from three domains so that the PD and PIS are implemented effectively. Incorrect selection of the components from three domains may result in quality and poor quality PD and PIS. Of course, the principle is the main character in this particular uh, presentation. In conclusion, this presentation supports the idea that teachers' professional development through principles, instruction, and vision. Very, very important. However, school principal needs to be mindful of selecting appropriate components of the experience, knowledge, and training that she embraced, he embraced during her leadership. And as a result, if this is selected properly and appropriately, effective leadership and management are reflected in our schools. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Thank you very much. You have presented. Okay. Uh, to start off, um, as I was listening to your presentation, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, this thing about community. All right. The need for uh, community respect uh, in order, I uh, assume, uh, to, to improve our student teachers. Uh, when they go to school later on to become a better teacher. So can you elaborate further about community respect? Are you referring to the society uh, surrounding the area in terms of like parents, you know, uh, around the school? Sorry, I didn't get your question there, sorry. Oh, okay. Keep Are you our community respect? Community respect. Uh, what do you mean by community respect? Okay, community respect. Community respect is like, um, you know, teachers, they come out as educators. And then what their role as educators will be recognized in the community okay. as educating the children. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they will be respected as teachers, as educators. And therefore, having that collaboration with the community will be encouraged, will be uh, motivated, having this, uh, you know, community respect. Okay. All right. Uh, one question I think it has uh, come up many times in the previous uh, presentation. Are teachers leaders? Teachers what? Are teachers, what? are teachers leaders? Readers. 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 Leader, yeah. Or leaders. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> they are leaders. Yeah. Teachers are leaders. You know, having a teacher in front of a classroom, he or she is a leader of that particular classroom. And here in Samoa, we, 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 we have a saying, we have a proverb, that, um, that says, uh, you know, a way to, to become a, a leader is through service. So this particular teacher has been serving, has been attending, the, you know, attending schools, has been serving others. And he or she will become a leader. And eventually standing in front of the classroom, even in their own family, you are a leader. We are all leaders in various settings. So I think a teacher in, in particular, as you ask the question, teacher is a leader. Yes. Not having an I believe in that. Okay. There is one question here about leader. Uh, you mentioned that leaders need to be upskilled. Okay. So the question here is, um, from your study, what were some influences on the principal's decision regarding how they do their work as principals? If you're tired. Mm -hmm. They feel tired of this upskilling. I think it's it's a matter of you know as I mentioned in my presentation of uh, they feel they sometimes feel comfortable of where they are. Mm -hmm. They think that oh here I am I have everything therefore well, why do I need to have any other you know more training? Unfortunately, as I mentioned, a good example is the information system, the technology. Mm -hmm. 
some of the principles are not up to standard with uh, the technology nowadays. As I mentioned, uh, we use the Moodle nowadays uh, since the COVID. So we, 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 we continue using Moodle uh, where we, we observe the, the isolation, the social distancing. So students don't come to class, but we use Moodle. Now, some of the principals having difficulties using Moodle. And here we are, we are telling the principal, hey, your teachers need to be up with the ball game in terms of Moodle. So how can he instruct the teachers to use Moodle? The principal himself, herself, is not able to do use Moodle. So what's happening is that they, they feel that, they feel tired, they feel that. You know, that, uh, that's a challenge they face, you know, uh, they go, oh, you know, let the teachers do that. You know, all I do is to, you know, provide guidance, guidance, you know, provide the platform for them to, to actually come on board. But I you know I encourage them to, they need to be models, they need to be leaders by doing, participating, getting more. Yeah. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult. Yeah. I think uh, one participant shared, uh, uh, his or her thoughts, uh, Molina, uh, mm -hmm. she said that happy principal makes happy teachers. Happy yes. teachers make happy learners. Yes. That's very interesting. Yes. Very, very that. Yes. Yeah, very, very interesting quote, actually. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, one question uh, posted, how do you encourage teachers to undergo research at this time? Well, it's, um, it's very, very crucial having research. First of all, they know that research is important. Mm -hmm. um, it's to inform practice. It's to inform what they do in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Now, are you referring to COVID time? Or assume, just the ordinary time? Yeah. I assume it's during uh, COVID time, because at this time, yeah. Maybe. I think we're having this collaboration, you know, having this teamwork, working together, having the collaboration, the sharing of information, Although using Moodle or online uh, platforms, we're able to share, we're able to sit down and talk. The more we talk, as I mentioned to in, the, in the presentation, the more we talk, the more we do, you know, having that peer influence. Yeah. And I also encourage my staff here, you know, having the senior staff members to, to, to support the junior staff members. Those who are very good with research, team up with those that are only one research. So the same principle applies to the schools. Mm -hmm. Having a team, working together, collaborating, and the more you do, the better it gets. You know, having that support from the senior, those who are good with research, uh, to those that uh, you know, very hard to push. It's, it's like hard to roll in terms of doing research. Did I answer the question? Sorry, you went out. Hello? Okay, yeah. Can you hear me? No, yeah. All right. I think I think I have one last question for you. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, as you know, you mentioned about experience, knowledge, and training. Uh, for 
for teacher trainers, we know that we, we train our student teachers. All right, they go through three, four years of training in the institution. I think the challenge, the greatest challenge is the transition from learning on. I think the transition is very important and it is a great challenge for student teachers. Actually, yes. your thoughts on this? Yes. yes. I agree with you. That's why I mentioned with the transition in, a, you know, coming from the being a student, although they are undergoing teaching practice, we call it teaching practice here at the Faculty of Education, where they actually go out to the schools. They spend one day or two days or six weeks in a school doing one lesson, teaching one lesson, and they come into the school to the university. However, as I mentioned earlier, that's a different environment. When they go out to the school, that's the reality of teaching, you know, facing the child with all these different behavior, all the different, uh, you know, actions that the students will, will, will show. Now, the, the, the new teacher will be struggling. The new teacher will be having a hard time because all the training is just went bang, gone. And this is a new environment where he or she needs the support. Now, having that PIS, uh, the Principal's Instructional Supervision, you now if she, he is able to provide that support to transition the new teacher from being a student to become a teacher, it, I think that will be very, very crucial. And this new teacher will be able to stand still, you know, stand strong and be able to progress you know, successfully. Right. So transition, yes, I agree with you. Very, very important. Okay. I, I would make this as the last question. Okay. How do principals and teachers feel about PD that is driven by demands from the ministry or government? We are curious to hear about what you think. Sorry, sorry. I think I didn't get that. Oh, how, how do principals and teachers uh, feel about PD? That you mentioned just now, PD. Oh, P PD. Uh, yes. Well, it's it's positive and negative. Yeah. No, some of them, some of them who are you know keen to learn more, they 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 want to learn more. They tend to appreciate PD. They appreciate professional development. I also mentioned about the three domains. You know the three diagrams, the Venn yeah. diagram. There is a region of experience that it's not covered by the uh, uh, knowledge and training. Mm -hmm. What's happening is that the principal may be using components, may be using ideas that are not related to the training, not related to the knowledge. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. To do the right. PD. And therefore, such components, such information may be bought. Mm -hmm. may not be relevant to this particular PD. And therefore, teachers feel that, oh, it's the same old thing. It's a repetition of what we heard before. It's, oh, what's that? It does, does not even relate to what we do. However, if the principal, that's why I mentioned in the, in the themes and also the conclusion, the principal needs to be selective, needs to filter, having that uh, K intersect, uh, E intersect uh, T, that mm -hmm. information, I feel that information will be sufficient. That information will be useful for teachers because it's not the same thing. The next time they look at the PD, they change. Yeah. But using filtering the right information for the PD, the teachers will not be bored. That's right. Okay. Uh, once again, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fagwele Swali, for spending some time with us and given, giving us insights on teachers' professional development. Thank you. Any last words you want to say? No, I just want to thank you once again to the to the colloquium for, for, for allowing me, IPTKPA, for allowing me the opportunity to, 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 to share my, my views, my ideas, and also my study with the thank whole world. You. And looking forward to continued collaboration with the, with the world out there. Thank you thank once you. again. Thank you so much. Terima kasih. Uh, so this concludes the webinar. Thank you all uh, for attending. We hope you have learned and enjoyed this presentation. Please do not forget our next webinar series will be held in Malaysian time. And I would also like to take this opportunity uh, to thank Dr. Selwa, who has been entertaining you by answering some of the questions.
with regards to housekeeping matters. And thank you to our two repertoires, Shakina and Harshini, uh, our very own student teachers from IPG KBA, and we are also training them to become leaders in the future. Until then, uh, tomorrow we are actually having a public holiday because we're going to celebrate Malaysia Day. So to everybody, all Malaysians, Selamat Hari Malaysia. Goodbye from Malaysia.